Thank you so much for uh, for having me, and um, I, I uh, was able to see some of the discussion. Uh, unfortunately, not being there with you, uh, but I'm happy to join uh, and and share some of our work uh, and ideas on transitions with you uh, from Rotterdam, where I am now. Um, I have uh, 10, 12 minutes, so I hope that uh, you can put some comments that you might have in the chat. Uh, and, and maybe I can pick up on those uh, because I can see the chat at the same time. So what I'm going to talk about is transition, transformation and how we understand it um, at our institute uh, in, at Erasmus University. Um, I'm director of DRIFT, we're called the Dutch Research Institute for Transitions and we're like a, a social science enterprise. So we're formally structured like a company, which means we're independent. All the risk is with us, uh, but it also means that we have the liberty to um, do academic work, uh, activism, consultancy, uh, project-based work, action research uh, on sustainable and just futures. And we do that in a very transdisciplinary way, uh, a word that quite common to uh, a lot of you, uh, basically meaning that we develop knowledge in and with practice to advance sustainability transitions. And I want to talk to you about what that means. Um, to understand that, we need to go back to a, a fundamental problem in society, and, and you're talking about socioeconomic inequalities. Uh, we also look a lot at uh, environmental inequalities or uh, problems. Uh, and the starting point really is the question why it's uh, impossible, almost impossible, seemingly impossible to create structural transformative change, to deal with these persistent problems that are with us for very long times. And we do all sorts of, uh, we make all sorts of attempts uh, to solve social e economic inequalities, health inequalities, um, environmental impacts, uh, poverty, and so on. Um, we talk about sustainability or justice or inclusivity, but if you look into reality, and these are some pictures from my city, Rotterdam, um, actually they are very persistent problems. And uh, we are looking in transitions research for explanations. And a core concept that we use is uh, that of a regime. There's all theory behind it. Given the time, I, I will only uh, uh, discuss the definition. Basically, a regime is the shared way of doing, thinking, and organizing in a societal system. So it's basically the way that people are used uh, to how things are organized in an energy system based on fossil fuels and big power plants or in a, um, a, a food system that is industrialized and highly productive where food is abundant, uh, but also in a social domain, let's say uh, how healthcare is organized or uh, how we deal with um, issues like poverty. I'll come back to that. But if you look at that specifically, these are examples from the Netherlands. Um, how we deal in society with persistent socioeconomic inequalities and problems um, also has a regime. Behind it are certain ways of thinking, certain organizational structures, certain institutions, and certain practices. So um, these are two examples. On the left, you see a, a newspaper article. We have in uh, uh, the Netherlands a whole rhetoric around problem neighborhoods. So uh, neighborhoods where uh, people with lower incomes, higher unemployment, health issues, maybe crime, uh, and they are labeled problem neighborhoods um, for which policymakers then uh, uh, seek to raise funds uh, to get programs uh, uh, online and to fund uh, projects and all sorts of interventions to improve these problem neighborhoods. I put it into uh, brackets because obviously they are just places where people with issues uh, 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 come together or live. Um, why I put it into brackets is because what we see in the Netherlands, there is a whole industry of um, uh, policymakers, but also organizations, institutions, and also researchers. So we're part of it uh, that uh, makes money out of this framing of problem neighborhoods. So we had problem neighborhoods as long as uh, we live, 
so they will never uh, be solved in that sense, but it is a frame that is useful as part of the way that we deal with socioeconomic issues. And on the right, you see a project that we did for years with uh, homeless youth in the Netherlands. There are around 12,000 uh, um, kids under 23 in the Netherlands that are uh, officially homeless. Uh, it's a tip of the iceberg. Um, and this, the uh, amount of uh, registered homeless youth is constant for the last 20 years or so, or maybe 25 years even. What we see that in the same uh, uh, period, uh, the amount of professionals involved in the issue of homeless youth, it uh, um, uh, multiplied by a factor of seven, and the amount of public money invested in uh, this issue multiplied by a factor 13. So what we start to see from our action research actually working with uh, homeless youth or, or, or in neighborhoods, combining it with this idea of a regime is that um, we, do, uh, we do things in a structurally a counterproductive way. We create an industry and a, a professional network and practices that are um, part of the problem in a way. Um, and if you zoom out, there's a more fundamental point to make, and I, I heard it being referred to today, uh, that you can also argue that the way our economy is structured, uh, and you just discussed platform economy, uh, that that is uh, um, on a basis that is inherently extractive and exclusive and unjust on the environmental side, but also on the socio-economic side. And we all might know that, especially if we come from a social uh, science or social activism kind of background, uh, but it's a fundamental uh, point to make. But that fossil, linear and extractive economy, it creates negative impacts on the environment, on people. And what we did is we created so social systems, structures, approaches, methods uh, to um, maybe fight or reduce those negative impacts. Um, and that has become part of the problem. So like sustainability, there's all in industry around sustainability, but there's also an industry around um, uh, socioeconomic uh, challenges. And we need a structural change. So uh, we call that a transition. It's basically a change in how we collectively think, organize, and do things. It takes a very long time. This is called the multi-level model. On the one hand, there's social changes putting pressure on these regimes and the actors within it. And on the other hand, there's niches. We call them, there's people that do different things or do things differently. What we see now, uh, we have COVID, we have all sorts of uh, uh, um, uh, international developments on migration, technological change, demographic change, and they all put pressure on how we deal in society with poverty, with exclusion, uh, with marginality. And uh, all these uh, changes in the context, they trigger a sort of destabilization. So they trigger... Uh, um, a, tensions within the regime. And this is how we now visualize transitions, that it's a process of regime change against the background of social change, but at the same time, it's about uh, regimes that are increasingly put under pressure and all sorts of internal tensions and, and, and problems uh, uh, increase. And on the other hand, there is this pattern where alternatives start to mature, people start to experiment, they come up with new ideas, and uh, once these regimes really enter a period of chaos, these alternatives might become bigger and become the norm, actually. So this is the idea, and it's based on a lot of historical uh, research and, and uh, models, but a transition is a process where, all, where um, uh, certain elements break down and are phased out, and some recombine with new elements to uh, create a new future regime. Um, and thinking like this, it requires a new kind of mindset. And, and, and my main message today is uh, about it's not about the money. We are all caught in a, a, a context of socioeconomic unsustainability uh, in which everything is about the money. Uh, but it's an unsustainable regime. So, And we are witnessing already the early signs of a regime shift away from the old equilibrium. 
And this, uh, these are the principles of a mindset that uh, says, uh, um, take the transition that is happening upon us as a given, try to look for the alternatives and try to uh, envisage desired futures. We call that backcasting. And then we need to uh, uh, sort of iteratively experiment with how to do things uh, differently. And, and one of the, the, the uh, uh, sort of synthesis figures of um, uh, sort of the future direction beyond a transition away from this unjust uh, linear fossil economy that is clearly destabilizing is towards a nature positive economy. It's an economy for, for uh, uh, people, for nature, uh, in which it's also about platforms and sharing. Um, but not uh, with the capitalist model of Uber or, or those. Uh, uh, so we know we have the guiding principles, whether it's on the social, the economic or the ecological side, that help to guide us. Um, and then this is the transition logic. Uh, yes, uh, surely I will s share the slide so you will get these um, because I go fast. But this is the logic of transitions that we really start to understand where we come from and the regimes that we are part of and how unsustainable they are. If we then embrace the possibility of transition, we can set a, a future course and try to uh, think backwards, where does it already start? So where does it start? I saw in the program, there's quite some examples, what we do here, and this is the action research that we do. Um, so it's about trying to find new kinds of practices that are uh, inherently linked or an, an empirical example of these kind of principles. So there might be local initiatives where people work together to uh, create green areas, produce food in the neighborhood with all sorts of social and psychological and uh, environmental and um, economic benefits. Um, there's all sorts of examples across the globe uh, or um, uh, collaborations that we are uh, organizing around uh, obstetrics, which is like uh, uh, all the professionals that are involved in, in uh, babies, <laughs> uh, like uh, uh, pregnancy and delivery. Uh, but this is uh, uh, an important uh, entry point to um, looking into health and healthy environments and uh, to um, improve the living and uh, health conditions uh, to create more resilience uh, at the neighborhood level, but also in the um, um, uh, community context. Or uh, the work that we do on mobility transition. It's uh, about resisting the dominance of car and the investments and the, um, and the public space offered to individual mobility um, to create projects and initiatives that are about um, mobilizing people, getting people involved in mobility systems, and then clean and affordable mobility. Um, so mobility should not be about solving uh, problems in the existing system, but about creating something new. Um, there are uh, dozens of uh, initiatives. I'm sure you know more of these, but take these as a starting point and uh, uh, as an action research starting point to figure out where do we need to go. and. Uh, now I end with a more political message, uh, because obviously that requires funds still, so it is to some extent about the money, but it's much more about the organizational power uh, and the empowerment and the uh, strategizing that we can bring with this transition mindset. Having set course, identifying the, the seeds of change and where it's already happening, and how can we identify the economic and institutional conditions that actually support a just and inclusive and sustainable economy, including phasing out what we don't want. So uh, these are my recommendations. I see my time is already up, so I, I had hoped to have three minutes for questions. Um, but my main call is, is to stop thinking about the money and to uh, uh, start focusing on the positive potential of transitions and the emerging potential of transitions, if only as an act of, of resistance and, and uh, rebellion against um, more of the same. Um, and in the end, it's also about uh, accepting failure in that process, but also about creating a context in which failure also on a human level is accepted and included. Uh, thank you for your 
time and attention. I will share the slides. Uh, so you will also get my email address and uh, email. Thank you very much.